Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, I'm coming at you with another paid request. This is from Elvis, who wanted me to take a look at the Sly documentary that came out on Netflix a few months ago. Um, finally had a chance to watch it because of the paid request. I also watched the Arnold documentary, which I reviewed previously. That was not a paid request. But I figured if I'm going to do one, I might as well do the other and knock it out. And there you have it. So there we go. Now, like the Arnold documentary, excuse me, I did like this for what it was, but I have problems with it. Mainly, the main issue that I have, and which was also one of the main issues that I have with the Arnold documentary, is it didn't talk enough about it his movies. The only movies that they really covered was the Rocky, really the first Rocky. They didn't dig that deep into the sequels, I will say. They talked about First Blood, and for some reason, Last Blood, but they didn't talk about Rambo 2, 3, and 4, and then Expendables. Other than that, if you, I mean, if you're going into this thinking you're going to hear about Cliffhanger and Demolition Man and all these other movies, you're not. That was that was so disappointing to not hear. They they talked a little bit about Oscar and Stopper. My mom will shoot, and they talked about Copland, but that's it. Nothing about Cobra, which is weird because they had footage from Cobra. They had behind the scenes footage from Cobra as well. They show stuff from Tango and Cash and Lock Up and all these other movies, but and no footage. There was no footage of Cliffhanger at all. So that was very disappointing. The other stuff was good, but well, for the most part. But the fact that they didn't jump into his really any of his movies outside of the the three franchises that he's a part of, and then a mention of a couple movies here and there was very disappointing. So yeah. But we'll cover that and the rest of it in the course of the video here. As always, we're going to knock this out. Uh, if anyone else would like to send in a paid request, you're more than welcome to down below. In the description box, there's a link to my PayPal account. And no amount is too big. And no amount is too small. It does not have to be a, a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you actually care about what I say and do on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody you guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel i keep making them and at the end of the day everybody goes home happy and just like they used to say at blockbuster so thank you but sly or in the words of joe bob briggs sly rocky rambo stallone and that's what i like to call him too sylvester stallone has always been one of my all-time favorite actors. In fact, he might be my favorite actor of all time. I mean, my fucking username here on YouTube is The Italian Stallion, so that should tell you something right there. I've always been a big fan of, uh, well, Rocky, yes, but Stallone for many reasons. Um, and they do, they do get on this a lot in the documentary. I don't care what anyone says. He is a great actor. How many people can do a movie like Rocky as their first starring role? What, one guy? Stallone? Write the movie? You know, not budge on, you know, well, this guy has to be Rocky. No, I, I'm Rocky. No, well, we're, on the, we're not going to pay you any money. I don't care. I got to do this. You know, and it became what it became. So you can't deny that Stallone is not a great actor which they do talk about, and I will cover that too. But he's an amazing writer. He's a fantastic director. He is a true renaissance man because he 
he'll be at the top, then he'll fall down, and then he comes back up, and then he falls down, and then he comes back up, and then he falls down. So, in every sense of the word, he is a Renaissance man. I think he's very intelligent. I don't think people give him enough credit for that. He's a very smart man, even though people may not think so. And he's had an amazing career. One of the things that they talk about is how he accidentally became an action star. And I'll, I'll lead the, the rest of the video off with this. I don't know if I believe that, to be honest. I don't know if I think that is what happened. I don't know if accidental is the word to use. Because I look at it this way. Conan the Barbarian and First Blood came out the same year. And people, even before Rambo, people like Rambo Mania, I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say. Before that, people were already comparing Arnold and Stallone as rivals. Like when Conan and First Blood came out. And then in 85, you had Commando and Rambo First Blood Part 2. And that's like where it started, you know, so to speak. No, I, and I don't think, again, accidentally Stallone became an action star. Because in the documentary, he was saying that First Blood, you know, was one of those first truly action films where the character used their body to tell the story. And I, I do agree with that because before that action movies were, and he talked about this in the Arnold documentary because they, there's a little bit of crossover there, which was cool. I guess they were filming these at the same time or close. And in that Sly said before that it was like a car chase or it was like a train scene or this or that. And, Rambo was like the first character to use their body to tell the story, big muscles and guns, and then Arnold, so there you go. So I don't know, again, I don't know if accidentally is the, the proper word to use. I never looked at it that way. I looked at it as Rocky was this great story that he told, and then he tried to do more movies like that, and it didn't really work, even though I like Fist which they talk about. I like Paradise Alley, which they talk about. And then he did Rambo, and then it's like, okay, well then that kind of saved my career, that kind of gave me a new thing, and then it made me the action guy. Accidentally. I think that Stallone resents that. I really do. Because I think he has this preconceived notion of people only look at him as Rambo or Rocky, or John Spartan from Demolition Man. They look at him as the action guy. And there's nothing wrong with that, because number one, a lot of those movies made a shit ton of money in when they came out. They're still making money. A lot of those movies are still very popular. There's nothing to be ashamed about. But I think that Stallone wants to be taken seriously, and I think that he looks at it that people don't. I completely disagree with that. People always did take him seriously because, again, going back to what I just said about Rocky, how many people can do that as their first starring role, get nominated for all these Oscars, the movie won Best Picture, um, and you mean to tell me that people didn't take Stallone seriously from that moment? I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't buy into that. But because... He was in great shape because he looked like a, a god in those action films, in Rambo, in Demolition Man, Cliffhanger, all these movies. Yeah, people want to see that. And there's nothing to be ashamed about, Sly. I mean, I know he's not watching, but there's nothing for him to be ashamed about because when people think of action, they think of usually Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, two of the biggest action, the two biggest action heroes. There's nothing to be embarrassed about that. There's nothing to be ashamed about that. I would own the fuck out of that. I know Arnold does. So, I mean, I love Stallone, and I get it. We are we, we are all our own biggest critics, but there's nothing to be ashamed about. Fucking own that shit, dude. You are Rambo. There's only one guy to play Rambo. You. You are Rambo. You are Rocky. You are the demolition man. There, There's nothing. No one can ever take that away from you. So I'll start the rest of that, the rest of the video with that. Because I just, and I know I've said that a million times. And I'm going to keep saying it because it is the truth.
There, there's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed that you made all these great action movies. I mean, Cliffhanger is a fantastic movie. I love Cobra. Cobra is a great movie. Over the Top, not really an action movie, but I love Over the Top. I love Tango and Cash. I love Lock Up. The six Rocky movies I love. The first four Rambos I love. The Specialist I dig quite a bit. Assassins is getting kind of its desserts. It's just desserts in the past couple of years. I dig Assassins. I love Daylight. I See You was good. So, again, Sly, I get it. But don't be embarrassed. I mean, these are great movies. People love these movies. There's nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about. So there you go. Um, so the, the biggest problem that I have with this is they didn't talk about enough of his movies, I think. The other problem is why couldn't this have been multiple parts? Now, I know different people did this than the Arnold one, but why couldn't they have done the same thing with that? Because that way you could talk about all these movies. Part one, like with Arnold, their early life up until Rocky. Part two, okay, Rocky comes out. I did a couple movies that didn't do well. I did Rocky 2. Then I did a couple movies that didn't do well. Then I did Rocky 3 and Rambo. And then you stop there. Or then that could be part two. And then part three could be the rest of the 80s, the 90s, and today. You could start with, okay, I did Rocky Four. Part three could be I did Rocky Four and Rambo Two in the same year. They were the biggest movies of my career. They were among the biggest movies of that year. Then it was me and Arnold. And then I was doing all these action movies. And then they weren't doing well. And then I tried to do this. And that didn't work. And then I came back with Demolition Man and Cliffhanger. And then it kind of rolled for a bit. And then it fell off again. And then I did Copland. And then I did this. And you could have done that. I don't know. Maybe Sly said no. Or... Netflix said no or whatever, but a big part of me wishes that this would have been three parts like the, the Schwarzenegger one. Because you could have covered all this stuff a little bit better. Um, it starts off, again, it talks about his early life. It talks about, it, a lot of it was about him and his dad, which a lot of that stuff I didn't know about, so that was interesting. How his dad was not really the, the nicest guy in the world and abused him a lot and, and would continue to abuse him well after his well into like him being the biggest guy in the world and everything. So it talked about that. He talked about how he got into acting and he got into writing and how nobody would hire him because they just looked at him as like the background goon and they showed like some little movies that he did. They showed footage of this 8mm film that he shot with John Herzfeld. John Herzfeld is a big director now. And him and Stallone grew up together and know each other. And I had never even knew that existed. But they showed this movie that they made where it was a cowboy and an Indian. And they died and came back from the dead. And they showed, I think, the whole movie. And I'm like, this is fucking cool. Like, I would like to see this on like a Blu-ray or something. And then it talked about him doing Lords of Flatbush and then how Rocky got started and, and that process. And then from there, again, it just kind of dipped off because they talked about Fist, which I like Fist. I, I think it's a good drama. I like Stallone's performance. I do agree. He said that he didn't like the ending because they killed him off and, and people didn't want to see that. I kind of agree with that. He talked about Paradise. They talked about Paradise Alley, how he directed, and that didn't do well. I like Paradise Alley. That's just me. And then they talked about Rocky too, but not much. They said he directed it because John Avildsen didn't like the script, and he said that after Rocky came out, he started to get into the dark side. Like he was doing drugs and drinking and all this, and he was getting out of control. So there, and Sly talked about that. He goes, you know, you could either go to the high road of the fame and the fortune, or you can go to the low road. And Sly, I don't think ever did drugs or anything like that, but he did say, you know, when you're at the top, you're, you know, 
you're like lonely and people won't leave you alone and there's no privacy and you could tell that he didn't like that part of it and I don't blame him. But yeah, they talk about Rocky 2 and then they get they don't really they don't talk much about Rocky 3. The only thing that they said about Rocky 3 was that you know, Adrian was scared too and that's it's okay to be scared. And then that was it. And then they talk the only thing they said about Rocky 4 was that Dolph put him in the hospital, which everybody knew. Rocky 5, which I like, he said people just didn't get it. But he liked working with his son, and then they didn't talk much about his son, uh, Sage. Like they showed like a thing that said he died, but they didn't talk about that, and they did he didn't talk about his other son. So, but then he talks about his daughter. I don't know. It's like, why would you not talk about all of your children? I just because he said like you know I should have been there for my kids more and I shouldn't have been as so and I get that I understand but talk about it more talk about okay what happened with with sage you know what the fuck you know cuz I thought that's what I thought when he died like what the fuck what about your other son you know your son's autistic talk about that like talk I don't know anyway sorry I went on a tangent but he said like Rocky 5 like people people weren't expecting that he wanted to tell the story of how you could lose it all, but in reality, it doesn't make any sense in Rocky Five because Rocky still would have had money and everything like that. I know it's a whole thing, but and then he talked about Rocky Balboa, where it was like he, everyone told him that they couldn't do it. Everyone told him he couldn't make it. They thought he was crazy, and he wanted to show like you're getting older and you're losing things, but you have to still be there and you have to adjust and you know, talked about the famous scene, you know, it's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and how that kind of was improvised and it was changed and stuff. Well, that's cool. Then they talked about Rambo, how it turned him based accidentally into an action star, but they didn't talk about any of the sequels. They didn't, except Last Blood. The only thing they talked about Last Blood was at the end, he was supposed to be dead but they used CGI to make the chair move, to make it alive. And I'm like, well, that movie wasn't good anyway, so it doesn't matter. But nothing about Rambo 2, nothing about Rambo 3. I'm like, you, no Rambo 2? Like, this was a huge movie. There's a part when he wears the hat from over the top, and I'm like, well, that's cool. But talk about over the top. They showed all this behind-the-scenes footage from Cobra. Nothing about Cobra. Nothing about Lockup. Nothing about any of these other films. They talked about Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, but they didn't go that much into it. Arnold said they offered the script to him, and he turned it down because he couldn't see himself marketing the movie. And I get that. So then why did Stallone do it? They don't really explain that. And then he, Stallone just said, I did these comedies, but they weren't for me. Because I can't really see myself in there. It didn't work for me. But I like Oscar. He said Oscar was like a farce. But the farce movie wasn't in then. So it didn't really work. And I disagree because I love Oscar. Oscar is his best comedy. But nothing about Demolition Man. Nothing about Cliffhanger. The movies that brought him back up. Nothing at all. I'm like, okay. Copland, they talked about that. I didn't know that the scene in De Niro's office at the ending when he keeps going on about, you know, you said that I could, if I needed help to come to you, listen, you deaf fuck. That was improvised. I didn't know that. But he said, well, Copland came out and it didn't do anything. Which is not really true because Copland did come out. It made money, but it didn't get Oscars and awards and everything. So there's that. But it was financially successful. Because it didn't cost that much to make. And I love Copland. Copland is one of his best performances. And he should have won an Oscar. And Robert Patrick agreed with me. Because we talked about that. But it was ahead of its time, I suppose. But then they didn't talk about like the direct video stuff. They talked a little bit about Expendables. It was really just, you know, well, why can't we do a movie with everybody together? And then they did it. And then he talked about his neck injury and he said, I haven't really recovered from that. 
Well, I understand when you're... He did that, what, in... He was, what, 63 when he did that? Yeah, you're not going to heal as fast as you do at 63 than you do at 33. So there's that. Um, that's kind of it for the movies. Uh, in between that stuff, he talks about, like, you know, the ups and the downs of fame. You know, I was... It gets lonely. And, and this is all stuff that he talked about before. It's nothing new, so to speak. Um, you know, he talked, he continued continually the, like the theme of it was like between him and his dad, just like all the stuff that went on. Frank was in there. It was good to see Frank, his brother. Um, but they didn't interview his wife. They didn't interview his daughters. I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, I know in the Arnold one, they didn't do that. They show some of his kids. They film stuff with some of his kids, but they didn't interview his kids. So I guess that wasn't part of the deal for this one. They interview Arnold, but it was weird because they shot it in a gym. And you could, I, I swear, you could barely hear Arnold. There was parts when there's like a lot of background noise. And there's parts when the music is mixed really up. And you there's parts when you could barely hear Arnold talk. And that was really distracting. Talia Shire gets interviewed. I thought that was cool, but no Carl Weathers. I assume that they shot this before Burt Young died. I don't know if he was ill or what, but he wasn't in there. There wasn't really anybody else that he worked with. I mean, Tarantino gets interviewed. That was cool. John Herzfeld was cool, but there wasn't really anybody that he had worked with other than Talia Shire and Henry Winkler because they worked on the Lords of Flatbush. But that's it. I mean, the again, the Arnold documentary had Jamie Lee Curtis, it had Linda Hamilton, it had James Cameron, it had Danny DeVito, Ivan Reitman. So it had people that Arnold had worked with. I wish it was more, but that's just me. But same with this one. Really, one, one actress. I know him and Tarantino never worked together. They always wanted to, but they never did because of just schedules. But... I just, I don't know. I just, I want it more out of this. Same with the, I think I, I want it more out of this one than the Arnold one because I like Stallone more than Arnold. Now, when I was a kid, it would have been opposite. But as I got older, I like Stallone more because Stallone was a better actor. Um, I think a lot of his movies are stronger because people always ask me, which one do you like more, Commando or Rambo First Blood Part 2? My answer is Rambo First Blood Part 2 because it's a better story. Commando has the better action because it's just a f comic book fun movie, but First Blood Part 2 is the better story. So, yeah. I mean, you could argue that Arnold's movies made more money, but and for certain films, not all of them, for certain movies. But I think Stallone, again, was always the better actor. I think he has a stronger filmography. That's just me. It's just how I look at it. But I just, I don't know. I really wanted a lot more out of this. I think that the hour and a half kind of killed it. It should have been a lot longer. But there was good stuff. I mean, I like the ending. Stallone says, I like happy endings. He goes, shoot me. I don't care. And that was the last line. And it was nice that he got interviewed. Like, they go back to where he grew up in New York City. And he hadn't been there since he was a kid. And he couldn't believe, like, the buildings were still there and everything. That was really cool. They go to the theater where Rocky premiered. And they shot a lot of stuff there, which was nice. Um, and again, I think, like with the Schwarzenegger one, it was very honest he was very honest he was very candid especially when he was talking about like not being there for his kids and you could tell that he definitely regretted that it opens up with him saying hell yeah i have regrets he goes but you find other ways to deal with that and i thought that was cool but i just i don't know why they didn't talk more especially about sage i don't know why they didn't talk about him more i i get it no, no parent ever wants to lose their child, but at this point in your life, 
you're doing this documentary, get those emotions out. Get those feelings out. Who cares if you shed a tear on camera? You're as, as a human being as I am or anybody else. You know, he talked about his dad dying, so there's that. Talk about his other son. I just, I don't know. Maybe Again, maybe he said no. He goes, this is, I will not talk about these things. Okay, I understand that, but. Like the Arnold documentary, is this something that I would ever watch again? Honestly, probably not. Most of the information I knew. The stuff that I didn't know, I know now. I mean, to see the behind-the-scenes footage and stuff like that, yeah, I'd, I'd pop it in for that, but I don't know. Just overall, I, I was disappointed. I mean, I like them for what they are, but I think I'm more disappointed than anything else because there's just so much there that was never covered that people want to hear. People want to hear about lockup. People want to hear about Tango and Cash. Like, Tango and Cash... What happened with that movie? Like, not in a bad way, but the director got fired and then Stallone took over, but he didn't get credit, so they had to hire someone else, but Stallone really directed. And then half of the movie got cut out. Like, talk about that shit. Cobra, who really directed Cobra? Was it you or was it Cosmatos? Who really directed Rambo 2? At this point in history, I think it's okay if you tell the truth about it. You know... Getting married to, to Brigitte Nielsen, you know, that whole whirlwind. Um, why not talk about that now? I I just, I don't know. Again, maybe he said no. Maybe that was off limits. I'd be curious to know, to be honest. But I don't know. Again, if you're a casual fan, or it, it is worth the watch, to be honest. But is this something that, like, if this ever came out officially, I mean, there's already bootlegs out there, but if this ever came out officially, would I ever buy it? Probably not. I mean, it's like, I can keep it on my hard drive just to watch it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need another watch of this. But I will end with this. There was a lot of stuff in this that I thought was very poorly shot. There is like Stallone is talking and the camera's moving everywhere and it's not focusing on him. I don't know what the fuck that was all about. And it's like actual good shit that he's talking about. He's talking about like a, a Rambo and he's talking about, you know, doing different things and fear and stuff and they're moving the camera around like when Arnold's talking you can barely hear what he's saying either the music is too much in the too high in the mix or there's shit going on in the background and they didn't re-record it or whatever and it's like okay now it's disappointing but oh well but it, it was worth a watch being a big fan but it was disappointing I, I know I keep saying that word. I know I repeat myself a lot, but not just in this video, but in every video I do. But both this and the Schwarzenegger movie, there was definitely a lot more that I expected. There was a lot more that I wish was there for me to bite off to chew because I wanted to hear more. And I'm sure most people did. That's just how I feel. So there you go. But anyway, uh, thank you for the paid requests. I know this took a little bit longer to get up. I apologize about that. I'm just double checking that here. Yeah, so no worries. And then uh, got some more paid requests to get to soon here. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Later.